do it along you explanation is a bit more i don't know I'm not saying ts don't give good explanation but it's better than... okay okay we'll see then uh, open your so you agree with that 12 or you if you both can do it that will be better okay can i have some uh, voting for this like hand raises some sort of hand raises Three, four, five, five, four, eight, ten. Sir, what are we voting on? So, so you want the uh, solve with the sessions to be taken by instructors, or is it okay if we give you the solve with the slides earlier and TS does it? Okay. How many of you are okay with uh, whatever we did in the last week or before last week? Okay. It's, it's no, no. okay, it's fine, but whatever we were doing before was, I think, a bit more yeah, helpful. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then uh, let me discuss with the team and we'll get back. Uh, uh, wait. We'll get back. Okay. So let me start this session and take the first five doubts. Yes. Yes, any doubt? But sir, uh, sir but I have a doubt and activity question. Just, just. Activity question, I have doubt. 10.4. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just opening. Question number four. Yes, question number four, sir. Okay. Uh, activity, AQ. AQ 10.4, question number four, and activity 10.3, also question number four. So question number four, and the second question is AQ 10.4 only. Eh? 10.3, question number four. Just a second. Just a second. Okay. I'm back. I lost my connection. In the thing, so. Okay, 10.3, question number four. Yes. Okay. Okay. So three, four, five. Anyone? So I have like a conceptual doubt. Is it hmm. okay? Uh, it's like when we take like uniform beta alpha be alpha beta equal to one. Uh, uh sorry, sorry. What is uniform? When we are taking like for bias in estimation, hmm. uh, when we take beta alpha alpha and beta equal to one, we like if you think conceptually, it should give us the likelihood estimator, right? Because we are taking all the Qs equal to one e equal, so it should give us the. We are not. Uh, it's like almost like taking Q as a constant, right? In uh, terms of... I, I am really sorry. I think uh, you are giving me some two three dots, but I am unable to connect those dots. So, so you are talking about a Bayesian estimator for what? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm for taking what? it and yet, uh, for like. Yeah, Bernoulli or whatever, and we are the prior we are taking is alpha and beta equal to one, right? So okay, so you are one. using you are using a, a beta uniform. prior, yeah, beta prior or uniform? It's a beta prior, but when it's alpha and beta equal to one, it will be oh, uniform. it's it, it will be uniform. Okay, yeah. let's let's treat uniform. Yeah, in that case, what we are doing is we are taking a lot of Qs that are equal, like Q, 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 all are equal, right? Like essentially, what is, what is so theta, 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 so all thetas are equal, right? Theta, theta, all like within that, like uh, when we are taking like uh, the thetas are uniform, the what P is uniform, all will be equal, right? No, uh, the probability uh, or see the theta taking values between 0 to 1 is uniform, that's it. So theta taking 0 0.1. And theta taking 0 0.9 yeah, as equal charge. Yeah, that means uh, if you are taking a, Q, a theta one, we are mm -hmm. not uh, we are not giving it a bias or like if we are giving everything as equal, right? Like theta one, theta two, theta three, for for all of it to happen, we are taking it like equal probability, right? So theta one, theta two, theta three are the samples drawn from the theta. Yeah, like uh, if you are like. 
say if you are not doing like a uniform if you are doing like a discrete value you will give theta 1 will you have like a certain probability 0.25 Theta two will have a probability point three. Ah, value. okay, I I got you. So yeah. you are talking about that base theorem got sorted. So he took some yeah. theta one as point two five and theta yeah, yeah. some points on there, and he has done some manipulations and. Yeah. So instead, if we are taking like theta this for this way, like we are mm -hmm. not we are not prioritizing theta one theta two. Instead, we are taking all as theta right here when we are. Uh, doing the uniform, that's what essentially we are doing, right? Theta, 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 like a lot of thetas within that. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so in that way, whatever we should get, it should be the most uh, maximum likelihood, right? Like whatever we get from bias. Uh, uh, here, you need to see the samples also, right? So what is this theta? This theta is a parameter mm -hmm. that comes from a distribution. So you will have some distribution with you some x or anything and it, it has some parameter theta yeah. and you will have you will observe some samples from this right mm -hmm. uh, based on the result of these samples you will update your prior beliefs yeah you you, you said the theta we, we thought theta is uniform between zero one yeah but so after observing the samples you are doing an adjustment based on the observation. Ah, uh, based on the observed uh, values, we will yeah. make some slight changes in our prior beliefs, and we call yes. it as posterior. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, what, what I'm asking that posterior value we get would shouldn't it be like the maximum likelihood value we will get? Like. Okay, so the, maximum you know, likelihood estimate as well as the Bayesian estimate should be same is what you are. Yeah, if, if if I'm like if my logic is correct, it should be. But here we are getting like an n. I I understand why we are not get like when we do the calculation, there is an n plus one term here. Hmm. And if you are taking alpha and beta, if the beta function alpha and beta equal to zero, we are getting the maximum likelihood estimate. I understood it from the workout. Like when we work it out, I understood why it's coming that way. They are coming as equal. But okay. conceptually, I am not understanding why there is like that n plus one term coming here. Acha. So, so you 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 are expecting something. This should work like ML. This should something yeah, this should, should be uh, equals yeah. to x bar or something. Yeah. Right. Instead, it is uh, it will come something like if it is posterior is some beta, alpha comma. Yeah. Yeah, there is like an n plus one term here. Like the yes, yes. other other place, it will be n by x bar. Here there will be n plus yeah, n there plus alpha. Like a, uh, okay, yeah, but there will be like an extra term. Mm -hmm. So so you are asking why this is uh, yeah coming. here like but if you like if you look at the concept of Bayesian, if you, what I what I understood, it's like in in like in maximum likelihood we are taking a sim theta which is mm -hmm. like a constant mm -hmm. yeah yeah and here when it comes to bayesian we are we are using prior values and we are right not we are putting our like our whatever like our x in different baskets like theta one theta two theta three like we are right. expecting yeah it should be like somewhere there mm -hmm. instead of putting everything in one place like it should be theta in terms of like a maximum likelihood correct and so when we do the uniform we are actually like doing the same thing right like instead like uh, not particularly mean, right yeah that's what i'm trying to understand uh so so not particularly see when we are when you are doing uniform what uh -huh. it says is theta taking any value between 0 1 has same probability but whereas yeah, ML, value, yeah, okay 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 we are ML, still prioritizing a value there uh -huh, there it says okay, theta okay. takes only one value between 0 to 1 okay okay got it. so so, so the yeah, main difference yeah. is this see here whatever theta or p or any parameter so let me call p is a constant we treat it as a constant it won't vary okay right so once we say it a constant so it, it takes only one value and it won't it won't float between zero one. So 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 p is p is 
some scalar value that belongs to 0 1. okay so this p belongs to 0 1 is different from p follows uniform, uniform yeah. 0 1. okay so, so yeah. there is a difference so here p is a scalar quantity and it, it takes only one particular value out of all the values here p can take any value between 0 1. So you understand yeah. the difference, yes, right? Sir. Yes, I got it, sir. Yeah. Ah, so that so here yes, P sir. is a random variable. Okay. Yeah, sir. So yeah. this is uh, the main difference, and that's what the Bayesian does. So Bayesian actually says instead of blindly believing how how come that is a constant, he says you don't know about P, and P has P can take zero, P can take for some point five, P can take one also. P P also have some set of ranges. And why they are treating it as constant. So let me treat it as a random variable and let me do my analysis. And he does that and he got succeeded. And right now we are studying that. Okay, yes, sir. Good. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, now let, let's come back. Uh, the third sir, uh, yeah. I have a doubt in week 10, tutorial 2, second question. Tutorial 2, question second two, question. week 10. Okay, four, five. Come on, no doubts. Uh, lecture ten point four, problem number two. AQ ten point four, question number two. Okay. No activity, nahi, uh, lecture lecture ten point four. Lecture ten point four. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. The so, last chance. Five, four, three. I have a question. I mean, you can just uh, uh, you can just say it right now. I mean, you don't have to write it down. Okay. When sir, whenever we are taking posterior, so mm. we are actually writing post. I mean, posterior density. Let's say, so mm -hmm. posterior density is like proportional to likelihood into the prior period. Mm -hmm. That that's the that's the bottom line over there. Mm. But sir, whenever I mean, let's say my prior PDF is following exponential with mm. let's say some parameter given mm. i mean some constant parameter is given let's say lambda is given as five or six let's say so sir my okay. prior pdf becomes let's say six okay let's take six so it becomes six into e raised to minus uh six lambda it becomes like that okay six, so six. sir whenever we are taking ha huh, for six for for expo mm. parameter six so, sir, in that case, when we are trying to take uh, this uh, equation, when we are trying to find the posterior density, so, sir, in that case, should we write posterior equals to? Because the 6 is there, so we need to remove that constant so we okay, can get yeah. the density. I understand. If 6 is given to you, what are you trying to estimate? I mean, sir, uh, we got to calculate for a posterior mean. For some question. No, 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 no. I mean, there, why, I mean, why so there was a question somewhere. I don't remember exactly. So I'm just that asking so? that. No. Yes, sir. There was a question. Uh, sir, that's why I'm just asking. Because I don't remember if it's a GA or PA or something. So I'm just asking, should we take the equals to and take the constant out and then take the proportional or something like that? And that's why I'm just asking. I'm not asking you to solve it or anything. I'm just asking for idea. Because I don't exactly remember which question was that. Okay, fine. So let me tell you one thing. See what what are we okay. doing in this uh, two weeks? What exactly we are doing in this two weeks? You have a parameter in your random variable, right? In your distribution, and you try to estimate that parameter. Correct? No. So if you, if I said x is following or maybe my p is following okay this is prior right yes sir that's prior okay hmm uh, now you wanted equal to here huh? uh yes sir because uh, we i mean in prior pdf if it's expo 6 hmm. then it would be like let's say theta so it would be uh, 6 into e raised to minus hmm. uh, 6 theta 
So, sir, that six is a constant, right? So ah. we just cannot. Uh, that that thing I'm talking about. I mean, no. let's say likelihood is following beta distribution, not beta. Let's mm -hmm. say Bernoulli. So p into mm -hmm. one minus p raised to something, whatever that is. But this mm -hmm. six I have to manage. That's what I'm asking. Okay. See, this pri this this six also comes inside the prior, right? Yes. Inside the prior thing, right? So why we write this directly proportional to? So I can actually write it this way, right? K times likelihood times prior. Into, ha, right? ha, ha. There is some constant that is multiplied to likelihood and prior. And we are not worrying about that constant because that doesn't give any, that is just the scaling of the distribution. Right? So ha, the same yeah. thing this 6 also does. Right? Ha, ha, yeah. So even though you have k, even though 6 comes here, this 6 will multiply to k and it becomes 6k or something. But that 6k is unnecessary. You can ignore that 6k and again you can go back. You just need uh, the factors which are involving p or theta here. Huh, you just huh. need those terms basically. So how posterior is proportional to theta terms. Okay. So for that, you mm -hmm. don't need actual, you don't need to work with this constant at all. So whatever constants you observe, you can ignore those constants and see how posterior is proportional to theta terms. And that 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 is sufficient to understand the distribution. Right? So sir, we can remove the constant. You mean that those constant those constant are in the PDF? Ah, uh, in this, in this, uh, in this finding the distribution in the, or understanding the distribution, constant mm -hmm. doesn't play much role. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is there will be some constant, but you don't need that constant to in order to understand the posterior distribution. That's what I mean. Okay. Gee. So 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 you don't have to worry about whether it is six k or k or some some other number, some 100 or 200 or some okay. gamma function, some gamma alpha plus beta divided by gamma alpha gamma beta. You don't mm -hmm. need that. There is there is something which is sitting as a constant, but you just see the theta terms, parameter mm -hmm. terms, and that itself will give you the distribution. Uh, that itself is sufficient to understand the distribution. Okay. Got it, sir. Okay. So with that, uh, Thank you, sir. So I didn't get the fifth question. Let me start with uh, AQ 10.3 first. So yes, sir. I'll do this first. Then this. Then this. Then this. Okay. So let me go in order. So let me start AQ 10.3 question 4 then. So by now everyone has watched the lectures, I hope, and you are aware of the concept, so you should help me in solving these problems. Okay. Hmm. So I don't know about I don't know how to solve this problem, so you should help. Fine. Okay. So what is the fourth question here? Uh, x1 say, to xn be an iid samples from a geometric p distribution is that mm, mm, yes that's that one okay so question says x1 to xn or iid geometric p distribution find the posterior distribution of p using beta alpha comma beta prior so our prior so p our prior is beta ah. beta alpha comma beta so beta alpha comma beta so i want posterior posterior which is proportional to likelihood and prior 
so so let's go step by step okay okay so i wanted this but for that i need to understand uh, let's say samples are given to us mm-hmm. okay so unless we have uh, observed the samples we we can't compute the posterior so once after observing the samples first and foremost thing is i know this posterior is directly proportional to likelihood i hope everyone knows this i guess the intuition behind why posterior is becoming likelihood times prime this comes from the base rule okay so now we have to find this and we already have this correct yes sir am i correct till here yes hmm okay so from here i know this prior distribution see this p prior is given to be beta alpha comma beta hmm so can i write this yes uh-huh. p prior something what will be this sir it will be like gamma alpha plus beta by gamma alpha okay. into gamma i don't beta. need that okay uh, yeah. so, sir p raised to alpha minus 1 Yes, p raised to alpha minus one into one minus, minus, one. Into into one one minus, minus p, beta minus. beta minus one. Correct. So this hmm. I have. I need this likelihood function. Sir, so, so that means the 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 start which I said hmm. uh, that is a constant. So we are removing it. Yes. So you don't need to worry about the constant. Okay. So now I I am interested to find the likelihood function. So we know from ml maximum likelihood function for that maximum likelihood function we have written likelihood function yes so what will be the likelihood function so this will be product of product i is equals to 1 to n mm. i is equals to 1 to n all fx of fx, FX. Mm. correct all yes, all of the x is x1 to xn are coming from geometric p yes so if it is coming from geometric p and what is this this is probability that x is taking xi yes uh, so what is this probability that x takes xi when x follows geometric p 1 minus p to the power uh, so you are getting this is this is like you are getting success first success at xi th time yes so that means you got xi minus 1 times value yeah so 1 minus p whole power xi minus 1 times values mm. and 1 times success mm. correct that is for x1 means what i do is i try to means go a little bit more uh, means step by step so i write like x is equal to x1 comma x uh, x is equal to x2 like that and then i combine them so uh-huh, uh-huh. See, still still this is there pi i yes. is equals to 1 to n still it is there mm-hmm. and then what i will do is i will just substitute i is equals to 1 2 3 and so on. so if i substitute yes. what i will get 1 minus p whole power x1 minus 1 times p this is when i is 1 times mm-hmm. this is pi product So one minus p whole power x two minus one times, times p hmm. times Till now one. i is equals to three. So this is i is one, this is hmm. i is two, and hmm. it goes like uh, when i is three, this will be one minus p x three minus one times p. Yes. And so on it goes till when i takes n. n when yes. i takes n, this is one minus p whole power x n minus one times p. Hmm. Mm. Okay. So yes. This is i is one. This is i is two. This i three, and so on. This is i n. So now you see this this term, this piece, p p. For every i, one piece sits inside. Yes. Correct. So there are n pieces. Product of n mm. pieces will be. So we have p, p times one. p times p times and so on p. 
and the other terms are 1 minus p whole power x1 minus 1, 1 minus p whole power x2 minus 1, and so on, 1 minus p whole power xn minus 1. Yes. Right? So these, these are n times. So I can write p power n times. Mm -hmm. You see 1 minus p, 1 minus p base, base are same, base is same. So I can add the yes. powers. 1 minus p x whole power x1 plus x2 plus and so on plus xn minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and so on minus 1. So how many minus 1s will be there? And and n minus, one. minus n, 1s. n times this also. Mm. So n minus 1s are minus n. Mm. Okay. So p power n times 1 minus p whole power. See, see this. Instead of writing x1 plus x2 plus x3 xn, can I write simply i is equals to 1 to n? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. xi minus n. Hmm. Right? So this is my likelihood. Correct? Yes. This is just my likelihood. I also have prior with us. Yes. Which is this. So now this should be multiplied. So likelihood should be multiplied to this prior. So what I will have is my posterior will be directly proportional to likelihood times prior. Mm -hmm. So this will be directly proportional to I, I have computed likelihood, which is p power n times 1 minus p whole power summation i is equals to 1 to n x i minus n. Right? Yes. Times. So I have directly proportional. I don't need the constant. I just need mm. the p terms. So the p terms are p power alpha minus alpha 1. Alpha minus 1. 1 minus p to beta minus 1. Beta minus 1. So again, again you see p and p. Mm. Same base, add the powers. So we are going to get p power n plus alpha minus 1 times 1 minus p summation. So again, 1 minus p, 1 minus p, you see, add these powers. Mm -hmm. X my summation x i to so n. This will be added and mm. this will be added. Okay. okay. Mm. So this will become summation i is equals to 1 to n x i minus n plus beta minus 1. Okay. Till okay. here, it's okay, right? Um, yes, sir. Now, you should understand the distribution of beta again. So, if I have anything, let's say Fy of y, I know that it is directly proportional to p power alpha minus 1 times 1 minus p power beta minus 1, then can I, I can say something about y. So, y follows? Beta alpha comma beta beta alpha comma beta right so you just have to see you uh, where means how we can say this is beta minus one means above one that we are doing so it's it's vice versa right so if y follows beta alpha b alpha comma beta you have mm -hmm. its density function which is proportional no, no, sir, to p power am, sir i am not asking that from the above one right you are saying that this follows a beta distribution so how we can infer that that is the uh, thing uh, that's the thing I'm coming there. But before mm. that, I took a jump. So I'm just talking about if I have seen something like this, if my density function is proportional mm. to some p power something and 1 minus p power something. Mm. If I see something like this, then I know that the distribution is actually beta, which is so there is something minus 1 that something will come as the first parameter. And hmm. something minus 1 for 1 minus p, that, that the other something will come to as the second parameter. Okay. Okay. Now that 1 will be always a constant layer, right? Ha. Huh. So if it is alpha minus, if p power, if it is alpha minus 1, that alpha comes as the first parameter. Hmm. Okay. So now hmm. do the same thing here. So you just need minus 1 out. Right. So p power mm -hmm. something minus 1 you need. Yes. So beta. So you see the basis p and 1 minus p. Mm -hmm. 
So once you see that p one minus p, you can sense that it is a beta distribution. Okay. Okay. So that's how mm. you can sense. If it is gamma, it 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 would have been something like lambda times c something, something like that. Hmm. If if it okay, is a so gamma, basically it depends on basis. Means whatever ah, basis. Ah. Look, look for the basis, and you should understand hmm. the distributions also. Beta follows like beta will be like this p and one minus p. So here also you have p and one minus p, mm -hmm. and I have to come up with two parameters inside. Yes. So I have to find these two. What are these two? So you see, p power something minus alpha. That something should come as the first one. So okay. if you observe clearly, p power something minus one. That something is this. N plus alpha. That is alpha. Alpha we can say at like n plus alpha. Ah. Uh, so that that sits as the first parameter in my beta. Okay. Okay. So similarly, mm -hmm. you see. One minus p whole power something minus one whole power something minus one that something will comments it in the second as the second parameter. Okay. Here, if you see one minus p and this is this all is a something, there is minus one. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, so this all comes and sits here. Summation i is equals to one to n x i minus n plus p. So this will come and sit here. This will come. Got and it, now sir. my posterior, p posterior, is a, a uh, distribution follow. from beta. Beta n plus alpha. From here you can compute p hat. P hat okay. yes. So basically it will be the um, whatever posterior mean we need. Ah, uh, posterior mean will be so if the ah alpha by alpha plus beta. Hmm. Got it, right? sir. Oh. Hmm. So that's how uh, this this by this plus this. Actually, I took that uh, that entire thing that gamma function everything was there. No? So uh, I took that. I got confused where how to proceed with anything something like that. That okay. may be the issue. Okay. So that's about ten point three question four. Now let's look at. Ten point four question two of lecture from the lecture itself. Can you can you read out the question? Or do I have to open it? Okay, give me some time. Let me open ten point four. Okay, is it this in a new machine? Suppose that out of ten uh, produced items. Yes, sir. No it's ten item. point ten uh, point four question number four. Okay, ten point four question number. No, 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 it's not question number four. Which question are you? You, uh, I think you are supposed to do question number two, I guess. Yes, yes. So, it, so the one who asked this question is it is that the same question? Can you confirm? No, sir. That's not the same question. So then, what is ten point four question two? It's uh, it says that to estimate a fraction of people P who supports the construction of a shopping mall in a city, a local newspaper conducted a poll of city residents. Out of sixty-eight people in sample, twenty-one supported the construction. Uh, so question number two actually says. That's an activity question. Yes. She said activity. lecture. She, she said lecture, she right? She precisely said lecture. Lecture, yeah, yeah. So the the one who asked the question, are you there, or else I will just simply skip. Uh, yes, sir, I'm here. Ah, okay. So what is your question? Is it related to the ten produced items? No item was found to be defective. Uh, no, in sir. That? Actually, in in uh, the professor uh, in the lecture, the question was about the machine production. Oh, that's what ten produced uh, items defect uh, defective. Ha uh, ha, uh, uh, defective, non-defective items. De related. Defective, non-defective. Okay, okay, got it. So that's the question. Okay, then I am I am correct. Same question for uh, same question is for ten point four question number four also. Yes, oh, ten point. 
okay then let's do uh, problem 2 this so it says so this is what it says let me write down what it says is uh, let me go down so this is lecture 10.4 question 2 so this is actually there are 10 uh, items are produced okay so this is the first thing this is the first thing ah. so out of these 10 items are uh, items produced uh, the next thing is no item was found to be defective okay so this is given and then what it says is how will you estimate the fraction of defective items produced by the new machine and the question is how will you how will you estimate the fraction estimate the fraction of defective items produced by the machine okay so and it says from data collected from other similar machines the average of fraction of defective items was found to be 10 percent and the actual fraction was between 15 percent to 5 percent to 15 percent in 95 percent of the cases so what it says is from some data we collected not not this machine so similar kind of machines from the similar kind of machine we got to know that uh, this fraction is 10 percent okay and it's also we also know that this particular fraction uh, so this fraction lies between five percent and this fraction and 15 percent in 95 percent of the cases so it says the probability that so what it simply says is the probability that this five percent less than fraction less than 15 percent is actually equals to 0 0.95 okay so this is what it says now uh, we are interested to firstly the question is how will you estimate the fraction of defective items so this is the given so i have written everything down so firstly observe 10 10 items are produced from the machine but none of them are uh, defective now what 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 should we do if none of them are de defective uh, we, we will get like something like zero our sample observed is like zero everything is zero right and you know if, if I define like this x is a random variable that takes 1 and 0 if 1 if item is defective if item is not defective so here the observed samples are 0 0 0 0 0 so what should I do now so I have x1 to xn which follows iid x i know this and i know x follows bernoulli so x follows basically bernoulli some p and this is what uh, we are trying to estimate right so p so this is what we are trying to estimate because p gives you the fraction actually p gives you 
the probability that item is defective now what should i do do i have any prior beliefs if not given so what should you do it's not given but what is the best prior belief you can think of but from the similar data collected from similar uh, machines the average of fraction of defective was found to be 10% so hmm. is it not the prior sir so you want to take uh, then that that will be a constant right see here we are we are trying to do the bayesian approach uh, uh, so prior has to be some uh, so is it good to take this so uniform zero to one or can i go with something else beta some some alpha and beta some values for alpha and beta which one will be most prefer preferable probably beta, beta alpha sir? beta gives gives you more choices right but how would you choose alpha and beta we also have to give value right yeah we you know we can take the value given as a mean and from the try to find an alpha beta like a ratio or something how uh, so see using p uniform 0 1 does this make sense if, like if you uh, don't have uh, any information uh, at all uh, 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 if i don't have any information then i can go for uniform 0 1 but i have seen none of them are defective all the 10 are not defective so still can i go for uniform 0 1 will you are will you agree to go see if you are let's say if you are a statistician and this is the problem you are uh, this is the problem you have in front of you so right. how would you so think it kind it kind yeah. of depends sir, because if it is if the sample is only 10 from say 20000 items that it produces you can still hmm. use uniform 0 to 1 i would okay so you would but given a chance that picking uniform 0 1 or picking beta uh, 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 beta alpha beta Which one would you prefer? Okay, so let me ask this then. So you 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 have to cut an apple, and I have given you a knife, and I have given you a scale, scale, iron scale. Which one would you prefer? Both both iron scale and knife cuts an apple, but which one will you prefer? knife knife knife, knife right so so going to uniform 01 is more or less uh, choosing uh this iron scale to cut an apple right if you have a better instrument to use if you have a better thing to use we go for better one right but how do you say sir the beta is better how do i say is because uh, based on the samples i observe so even if i see one one defective out of this 10 mm. my mind would my mind would uh, or maybe i will think okay let's go for uniform let's not make uh, things bit vague or something but even I, uh, that is what i am telling choosing uniform 0 1 is also a good thing i am not denying that but if i if i have observed this samples mm. and then i know that i can also use beta alpha beta then i would preferably use that rather than uniform so But how would we choose you to what choose alpha and beta uh, beta and alpha ha that so i am not sure right beta. so well, if we have no information about the prior hmm. and we are just given this sample why would we assume that there will be defective this is like why why is that kind of assumption see uh, that, uh, that's the uh, real life uh, situations right see your mission in the first 10 days or maybe in the first 5 days works very properly right it doesn't produce any can you guarantee that it will stay uh, like that forever with the yeah, 
yeah but even that is like our prior information right like something we know from experience right even that is like a prior assumption right like right right uh, that's what we are going to do now mm-hmm. see you have seen similar kind of machines already but uh, this machine actually giving me uh, no defectives only using this machine i can't estimate properly right i can't say i can't conclude anything given 10 uh, uh, items from this particular machine and all the 10 of them are not defective using only this particular information so being a statistician i can't conclude anything there straight away yes or no see 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 that, that is what think think like you are a real statistician now and in in front of you there is a machine and they said sir we have made uh, 10 items from this and none of them are defective and will you will you conclude that this this machine produces uh, uh items without defective straight away or can you say it will not produce can you conclude anything with only the information you have No. no right sir, of is, course you will not conclude is is it like you know why we are choosing beta just because there there is going to be a probability for success and failure as well so mm. so that's why like i guess we are using beta right uh, uh no since like uh, the failure it is i mean the success is uh, not one so like the p is raised to zero right sir so it it ah. is kind of uh, it it is more similar to beta rather than just uniform correct so you 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 see. can see that you can see this way also see when you are building a machine or any machine you expect that machine to give less defective items and more non defective items mm. right and when i take my p which is the defective uh, probability of defectiveness if i say it is uniform between 0 1 it, it, it is like uh, the number of uh, defective items i make uh, 10 9 out of 10 and number of defective items i make 1 out of 10 is more or less same is what i believe in the starting so this is this shouldn't be our belief right our belief should be always p should be as low as possible correct where p is the probability of defective item um yes sir i agree now that you yeah. ma- said that uh, uh, p should be low as possible in perhaps this situation but i mean if i think about for example manufacture of uh, uh, the microchips on a wafer initially the yields are very low i mean we are talking like uh, you know sometimes yields can be as poor as 50% so mm-hmm. you know i mean that's So it depends a bit on the context of context. What the yes, machine yes, is. yes, 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 yes. Cor- correct context. So in this particular context, when you have seen this particular scenario, in this particular scenario, so what is the best uh, belief you can make of? So the best it would be beta. beta. Yeah, beta, because beta, alpha, uh, beta. Yeah. Yeah, because the defective and not defective, they should not be uniform. Yes. Uh, That's, that's why we would go go with beta yes that's why we would go with beta but where should i start so what should be my alpha and what should be my beta question marks so for this we will use the information we have for the other machines so we know that for a similar machines we know that uh, the fraction is 10% so that means the expectation of this particular p is 0.1 right that's what that's what we will come to so can you explain yeah. the last line means what it says that 5% less than fraction less than ah that we will come that that will come that will come so now, right now we are in this line okay. so in order to estimate this fraction only this thing is not sufficient okay so we we think that it follows a beta alpha beta but we don't know alpha and beta we are trying to estimate it for estimating that we need uh, some more information about alpha and beta so to get alpha and beta for that finding alpha and beta 
we are going to use this particular information what this says this actually says this fraction is actually 10 percent so what does that mean average and they also said average i guess i missed that average uh, the so average so of the be, fraction yeah. yeah that would be point one is equal to alpha by alpha plus beta. alpha plus beta uh -huh. so 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 you should understand that sense so what do i mean by average fraction mean right average fraction means mean of this p right which is more or less can i say expectation of this p or maybe p prior <laughs> Take a moment and understand this. So mean or the expectation, both are same, right? And it, it actually gives me the average, average, right? Now, how how can I get this? So this is this is given. Sorry, this is given as ten percent. And how do I relate this to my alpha? Is there any way I can relate? Alpha by alpha plus beta is equal to 10%. Where that alpha by alpha plus beta came? Because if you have assumed beta prior as the prior, mm. then the mean of that is alpha by alpha plus beta. Mm. Good. So, when I said P follows prior, uh, P prior follows beta distribution, the mean of this beta, uh, prior or this expectation of this p prior so what is the mean of a beta distribution so you should uh, like prior distribution uh, you have to add the prior distributions and uh, divide it by the total number is it no no i was just i didn't get into this lo uh, likelihood and then i didn't uh, went to the posterior at all Okay. So if I have a distribution P which follows beta alpha comma beta, what is the mean of that uh, distribution? Alpha by alpha plus beta. Alpha, alpha by, by alpha, alpha plus, plus alpha by alpha plus beta. That's it. Mm -hmm. And from previously, I know that this is actually equals to ten percent. Right from from the previous missions, I came to know that this is actually ten percent. And from here, alpha beta, I know that this mean is. This mean is alpha by alpha plus beta. So what I will simply get is this 10% is equal to alpha by alpha plus beta. Okay. So I got one equation. Maybe 10% I will write it as 0.1. Okay, 10% or 0.1, both are same. So I got one equation. And the next equation I will get from the samples. So I still have information with me. I, I have observed the samples. So I have observed the samples. I know that I have taken prior to be following beta alpha comma beta. Now, using these two, can I come up with the posterior distribution? Yes, sir. No. Yeah. So given the samples these are my samples and given p prior follows beta alpha comma beta so this is prior and using this samples i can compute the likelihood so once i have prior and likelihood with me i can compute this posterior What, what does this mean? What will be the likelihood? 1 minus P, the 1 minus P whole power 10. 1 minus P whole power, so 10 defective items, so 10. Yeah. Into prior. What is the prior distribution? So P, P power, power uh, alpha minus 1 times 1 minus P whole power. Beta minus beta minus 
so this is this and from here i will have p power alpha minus 1 1 minus p whole power 10 plus beta minus 1 so all see likelihood how i computed likelihood all of them are not defective so for being not defective the probability is 1 minus p all the 10 items to be non defective is 1 minus p into 1 minus p into 1 minus p into and so on 10 times so i'll get this 1 minus p whole power 10 and computation will be like this so again i have observed that my posterior is directly proportional to some p power something and 1 minus p power something so which so distribution my posterior beta. follow ah. beta so it's again p posterior will follow beta and I have to come up with this two things, alpha and beta. What what is that? So p power something minus one. So, so the something is one. alpha only. Alpha sorry. Ten alpha plus beta. Ten plus beta. Ten, ten plus beta. Ten, ten plus beta. No, plus beta. This, uh... no p power something minus one. That something should come here. One minus p power. And, uh, something one minus, minus p power. One. Okay. That something. Okay. So you you, you, you oh, shouldn't this. always confuse. This will be alpha minus one times one minus p beta minus one. Mm. Then if if some distribution is following this, then I know that this follows beta alpha comma beta. So alpha minus one beta minus one. That minus one should be ruled out. That sir. shouldn't come in my distribution. No, sir, uh, but can we not write this? Uh, Ten minus one is nine plus. Uh, 9 plus beta, right? Ah, you can write 9 plus beta. Then, uh, then what comes into this thing? So it would be the same 9 plus beta plus 1. So it becomes 10 plus beta 10 eventually. Plus beta. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. So you always think that this minus 1 P, this will not go. This 1 minus P and again this minus 1 will not go. And whatever is left, this alpha comes here, that 10 plus b comes here. That's it. Okay. So posterior, I got this. From this, I can compute the posterior mean. We had base. Yes. What is the posterior mean? Alpha by alpha, alpha plus, plus beta plus 10, 10 plus beta. So this I am going to get as alpha by 10 plus alpha plus beta. Okay, very good. So this I got and this I already have with me. And next, so not sufficient, right? Still, I can't find alpha and betas. Because I don't know this. I just computed, but I don't know this. Mm. What to do now? There is one more information given to us. Let's go back and read that information. So what is given to us? It is given to us that 5%. Uh, so whatever the fraction you are going to get, that will lie in between 5% and 15% per, in 95% of the cases. What does this mean actually? So if I say that uh, I find... Uh, Cyan that is a mean, Nehru. mean uh, lying between 5 and 15. Yes. So it's like, so finding uh, so cyan or someone in, in a room, in a room, uh, in the times of some 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. has 95% chance. So, so that means uh, cyan lies, uh, so cyan stays in that particular time has probability 0.95%. So, so other 5% cases, he will not be there in that time. So that's how it is. Here also the fraction will be in between 5% to 15% in 95% of the cases. So, so you treat it like this. So machine 1, you know the fraction. Machine 2, you know the fraction. Machine 3, you know the fraction. Machine 100, you know the fraction. fraction. And what happened is, out of these 100 machines, 95 machines, their fractions lie in between this 5% to 15%. And there are 5 machines whose fractions are either below 5% or above 15%. Okay. 
so what does actually tells is out of 195 uh, machines will will have a fraction in between 5% to 15% it is more or less in in terms of probability speaking in probabilities there is a probability that the fraction lies in between 5% to 15% is equals to 0.95 so in words it says 95% of the cases my fraction lies in between 5% to 15% so now what is this fraction related to or what is this fraction is it prior fraction or is it posterior fraction that's a posterior is it posterior or prior come on it sh it should be the posterior one like we are that's what we are, we are getting that confidence within 95% like whatever value we get estimated it should be between those 5 and 15 uh, but because it's it given in the actual hmm. fraction mm -hmm. the actual fraction was between 5 and 15% yes yes i forgot so, actual fraction so this is an actual fraction and it's so given in the, the information this is what is estimated no yeah. Uh, this is uh, yeah. p hat is the actual fraction which we have estimated. Hmm. So you should use posterior, right? Correct. So that's what we are going to do. So we know that this probability is 5% less than or equals to this p hat base is less than or equals to 15% is 0 0.95. So this is the extra information given to us. And from this, I know this is 0 0.05 less than or equals to this is alpha by some 10 plus alpha plus beta less than or equals to 0 0.15 is equals to 0 0.95. So this is, this is actually beta, you know, right? This is a beta distribution. P hat base follows beta. Right? That's what we know. P hat posterior or P hat base, both, both are same. P hat base is fraction. And that fraction, I hope everyone knows. So this is the graph of beta. It will be somewhat like this. Right? So this P comes at 0 0.1 because the mean is 0 0.1. And we are worried about 0 0.05 and 0 0.15. My P hat base lying inside this. this That's it. So from there, you compute, you, you, you just use the tables, I guess. Uh, and then you can get uh, the values of alpha and beta. Okay. Tables so which table? Speed? Beta, beta distribution table, right? Mm -hmm. okay. the, then in the exam, the values will be given? Or? Ah, in exam will be given to you. You don't need the tables. Okay. It will be given in the useful information. Use that values and get the answer. Sir, I have a small doubt here. Mm. Can, can this be converted to a normal distribution? You know, like how we did where we subtract the mean. And Can beta by... act as a normal? I mean, I know it's between 0 and 1. Ah. So... so what What do, is it reasonable to normalize this beta? I, I don't know. That's why I was asking. Cause, no. Uh, okay. Because um, um, a few, like a few, like, you know, few sessions back, you know, we were talking ah. about how any distribution we can just yes. uh, convert it to normal and then use the tables and find the answers. So, uh -huh. uh, so see, any distribution we mean, and not this beta and gamma. See, these are special distributions. Okay. And see, if you use your error, will be slightly more. You can normalize this, but 
in the error in which you are going to get will be slightly more that's what i think but that's a valid question even i never thought of this so let me let me think about this and give you a proper answer okay so i think no so my 95% with a 95% probability i i am saying that you can't but but clt says the other way let me let me just take on this and get back to okay okay thank you sir okay so you find from here uh, just use the tables and find alpha and beta and once you get the alpha and beta you just substitute here and then you can actually estimate what you can do you can actually estimate the fraction of defective items produced by the machine and one good thing about this process a bayesian processor is so you see when you observe the samples if i use method of uh, moments or maximum likelihood what what will i end up getting maybe zero like there is no that's right so we will end up getting uh, p hat ml and p hat mm p to be zero given here this is this sample is not like a good sample for our estimation right? but we are doing what we can what we are doing the best we can do with the given sample right correct correct so bayesian does that but ml and mme fails am see how how these ml and mme are that dependent on samples so given a bad samples your ml and mme predictions are worse okay comparatively uh, ml compare it comparing it with ml and mme this bayesian works slightly better even if samples are bad Oh. Sir, hmm. you said with the tables you can find alpha and beta. Hmm. So hmm. with the tables you'll be getting one value, right? Uh, probability of point uh, zero five less than or equal to alpha by alpha plus beta plus ten less than or equal to point one five is equal uh -huh. to nine point nine five. You hmm. get one value. So you right, equate right. the value to alpha by ten plus alpha plus beta, is it? Hmm. So you get that. that then you get and uh, from, one in you, terms of this. other. Oh, okay. Correct, the other correct. one. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we already have this. So you have two and equations, two unknowns, uh, two, and solve two for unknowns, it. and you can solve for alpha and beta. Okay. Okay. So this is this that is why I have written one, and from here you will get the second equation, and so we can solve one and two. Okay. So that is there, and so. If that is the situation, then four and one are done. I guess, as Purnendra said, both are more or less equal. Yes, just a little bit different. Like uh, there, they say that uh, P represents the proportion of defective items. Ah, uh, then it's more or less same proportion or fraction. Yes. Uh, so. <coughs> Sorry. Sir. No, here the proportion is unknown actually. So okay. Earlier so we had like uh, no no defective items. Okay. So can you do this then? Uh, excuse me, sir. Hmm. Uh, I get the uh, calculation part, but uh, I am still unable to think uh, which is the best uh, prior for given sample distribution. As here, we take uh, beta, but hmm. sometimes it is gamma or uh, uniform. So how can we think that which is better? See gamma. it depends on the support of that particular random variable see what is the support of beta can you tell me uh, the beta values from where to where it can take i think you see to 1 to 1 so beta values all always between 0 to 1 whereas gamma where 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 the values of gamma sit So zero mean, to uh, infinity. Zero to infinity, right? So yes, when you see, ah, yeah. uh, when you see, let me complete. Okay. So when you see this, this kind of parameter, the parameter which you are going to estimate. So you see, this is Bernoulli p, and you know p is a probability of success, and probability of a success, you know that it lies between zero to one. Yes. Sir. Right. Ah. Uh, so when you know that p lies between zero to one. 
you should select your prior in such a way that the prior which is selected should also be in the support of 0 to 1 right it shouldn't go more than that right that's how you you start assuming the things right your prior beliefs or your beliefs should be more or less match to your predicted va prediction values right okay. so okay. if you are predicting some value which is between 0 to 1 and you you took your prior like uh, p is uniform between 2 to 3 that doesn't make sense right p cannot take between 2 to 3 at all and taking uniform prior between 2 to 3 is a wrong choosing of prior okay i mean uh, i have i have to think uh, about the support yes of both okay. support of the parameter so here the parameter is probability of success for this you should use either so so that p i know that it will be below between 0 to 1 so good priors are this or this these are the only two priors which which will be from 0 to 1 or you can you can if you are much confident about this you can also start with uniform some 0 0.25 to 0 0.75 so if you if you know that if you know if you have much more information about your p you can start from here start like this and you get better result and it depends everything depends on the parameter and you should check the parameter which you are estimating okay 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 so then let us go to tutorial 10 point tutorial 2 question 2 week 10 So tutorial two question two. Let me open that. Uh, is the question uh, about the company ships items in packs of six? Sir, in that question, I have only one doubt. Ah, what is that? about the prior distribution? Uh, I am getting it as one point five, but in the solution, it is given as zero point six six. Prior distribution, huh? Yes. Okay, what it says: uh, a company ships items in pack of six. Number of defective items in the last ten ship shipments are two two zero three one zero zero one three one. Prior information suggests that the highest number of defective items shipped in a pack is 4. Find the posterior mean for the fraction of defective items P in a pack of 6 using a uniform prior for P. Okay. So what this, this says? So you, you are shipping uh, some six cans, huh? what are those? Pack of items. six. Some, some items, six yeah. items are shipped at a time, correct? At a time. And they said that maximum number of defective items in a pack is four. Right, max defective items in a pack in a pack, it means it's six is four. So that means the proportion of defective items will not cross four by six. That's what they said, right? Thank you. Yes, yes. So the max defective items in a pack means out of six items i i didn't see more than four so that means the fraction is not more than four by six fraction of defective so this is fraction of defective right yes that's what they said right and yeah. i know that this fraction is greater than zero right or greater than or equals to zero it can't go negative fractions cannot go negative so now this is what I know and what could be my best prior 
thing i can choose looking at the sample some some it is given right zero one zero something so looking at this you see there are zero defective items one defective items two defective items three defective items but i didn't see four but so everything is possible zero one two three and all so one best prior i can choose this they say in their use uniform yeah. ah uniform 4 by 6 simply use uniform 4 by 6 because i can't much infer about this or i can i can't say much more uh when it. they are multiplying that it they are multiplying it by uh, 0.66 um multiplying the likelihood so, with the 0.66 uh, yeah so 4 by 6 is uh, 0.67 yeah uh, don't we should not find like 1 by b minus a that uh, we should not do like that's, that that's that's the no 1 minus b minus a is 1 by 4 by 6 yes so so b minus a means b minus a is 0 okay so it becomes 6 by 4 Okay, the density will be reversed. Is that what you meant? Right, Sorry, density, I didn't get you. Yeah. The density. So this is what you are stating, right? Yes. Should we do that or uh, should not do that? I am confused with that. Ideally, we should do this. So it's three by two, right? Yeah. Hmm. So the prior is three by two. So they took zero, is it? Sorry, sorry, four by six, is it? Yes, uh, I guess zero point six six. They have multiplied with it. Okay. Okay, prior they multiplied it by zero point six six. Yeah. Rather they no, could. No, uh, no, no, oh. not not the prior. The uh, the posterior density. uh they are multiplying it with the likelihood ah oh, that's what see in order to find the posterior yes likelihood times prior so this prior they are you they used 0.66 is what you are saying is what yes yes uh, okay okay correct uh, you are correct it, it shouldn't be 0.66 it should be 1.5 Okay. Thank you. So this is correct. Okay. Sir, this doesn't change our answer, right? Th that that doesn't change our right? answer. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. See, this is actually a constant and it will not play any role in my posterior distribution. okay so the answer will not change but yeah as you pointed it out it shouldn't be 0.66 it should be 1 point okay okay what else what else then sir i have a small doubt regarding hypergeometric mm -hmm. so uh, whatever sir said about the hypergeometric uh, earlier mm -hmm. also and now also so basically if you have a probability for finding something say x equal to x then the general law that we follow is the uh, type 1 uh, uh, um, basically the that is n choose that value right so mm -hmm. the type 1 choose uh, the fraction the probability that we need to find times mm -hmm. uh, the type 2 choose the probability so in simple terms if i say that's uh, like uh, ncx times n minus x choose n minus x right and divided mm -hmm. by c yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so basically uh, means i understood everything but i didn't understood what individual n means there because n minus x the x is the type type 2 the thing that is uh, type 2 so we have type 1 uh, uh, and mm -hmm. and n minus x is type 2 so if i say individual n what does it means ah okay so i hope uh, you know the graph also i guess see this hypergeometric uh, comes 
into the picture when you have two different things mm. and you are observing one thing right probability of one thing happening uh even though you have it's like red and blue balls inside some mm-hmm. urn and you are picking what is the you are picking some 10 balls out of it and what yes. is the probability that picking all 10 are red so that mm. that's actually comes under hypergeometric cases right you can treat it in that way only so you okay. you, you don't treat like hypergeometric distribution is coming from some some black box something some magic is done and it is coming outside it's not that see you have solved this problems right this kind of problems in your stats one i guess there is some urn and there are some n red balls and some n blue balls yes okay and mm. you have drawn uh, some 50 balls out of it yes okay and you are interested to ask a question like out of the 50 drawn balls how many balls are how many maybe what is the probability that 20 red balls are coming 20 yes balls, sir 20 blue mm-hmm. balls just what will you do so basically we will take like probability that 50 balls are 20 so probability of ha huh. uh, so out of these n n blue balls mm-hmm. 20 and mm-hmm. nc 30 because once it is 20 divided blue balls mm-hmm. the other 30 are red balls mm-hmm. divided by n plus n c 50 right how many ways mm-hmm. i can choose uh, so uh, that's what hypergeometric also so the same mm-hmm. thing hypergeometric also says rather we we introduce something like type 1 type 2 So, okay. so, so even in this capture recapture also, tag mm. untagged. Yes, okay. yes. Ah, uh, same thing, same thing. Same thing you can use and treat hypergeometric has some some sort of probabilities you have done earlier. Sir, in general, uh, what I have seen from the hypergeometric questions, like mm. here we uh, we we infer right here we also infer uh, mm. if fifty balls are there and twenty are red balls, then thirty. will not be red balls as per our whatever probability we want to find so we have to infer it from the thing right hmm. so it's a tag uh, 20% are tagged so that means that the, uh, if we have 100 100 total then 80% will not be tagged hmm. so it's right. like that it's like that and stating all these things don't worry much about hypergeometric thing so we have used okay. it only at one place and mm. we don't want to uh, introduce much on this or spend more time or ask questions on this hypergeometric things okay so we and have lots of the... lots of things uh, to ask mm. and mm. hypergeometric can be explored okay yeah. so means it's a sort of different story overall ha uh-huh. ha see there is a high probability that students will get confused in that particular point mm. and there is no point of asking a question on where most of the students are getting confused so that's not what we wanted to do okay mm-hmm. but this is good to study if you understand it's okay if you are unable to understand don't don't scratch your brain or don't think that uh, unless you learn this you didn't know anything Okay, and sir, what about the third question, which sir did in, on the collab? Ah, uh, that also you can ignore. If you if you are not familiar with this Python and all, you can simply ignore. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, what else? Any doubts? If not, we can end the session, and maybe that's a record uh, I can break. so if uh, if no one has any doubts and if you if the you know if the session is over i have some questions mm. after the session is over ha ah, looks like uh, more or less session got over i guess so you can ask uh, okay so so um this has to do more with um uh, like the extra activities that we've been doing oh um mm. and so um i have a, a 
a set of data and mm -hmm. I want to try and fit a distribution to it. And I'm mm -hmm. not quite sure how to go about it. Now I did go to one of the TA sessions mm -hmm. and um, the TA suggested, you know, a certain distribution, but I don't think that's the correct answer because I could not find a way to make that work. Um, okay. So that's why I wanted to try okay, and so see if I could so pick so your brain about it and how do I go about it basically. Okay, let's, let's hear it out. So um, I've got um, uh, sort of um, uh, data points for solar radiation. Mm -hmm. And um, during the day, so about 14 hours worth of solar radiation occurs and they take values at each hour, you know. So at the start of the day, it's very little and towards the end of the day, you know, it's very little. But in the middle of the day, it's a lot, obviously. Okay. Um, and it so forms a sort of... Yeah. So uh, do you want can to, I can I take the support? Can I hear the um, support? So uh, this is this is where my confusion lies. I mean, is is the support coming from the hours or is it from the values that the variable takes? It will take. It will be the values that the variable takes, isn't it? Right. Of course. Yeah. See. So, see. Are you? Uh, so how are you defining your random variable? Is it so the so the random variable will be the solar uh, watts per hour. That's what the random variable. Will be. Okay, so some so some some quantity solar watt watts per sorry watts per meter square per hour. Watts per meter square per hour. Meter square and hour. Yes. Oh. Okay. Because you'll you'll have the solar radiation that gives you so many watts. It's for a, a meter square, okay. and it'll be in that hour. So throughout the day, if I plot something uh, with respect to time. Yes. So this this you said something like. Yeah, it will start at zero and then it'll go up and then it'll come down. So something sort of normal. Yes. All right, and. So you are breaking it in, uh, in the intervals of hours, is it? Yes. Average. Are you taking average of it? Correct. OK. And you will have some discrete values to you? Yes. So what happens is, um, so I can give you the values. There are only 15 of them anyway. 50 per day. So you computed 15, per 15. day. Yeah? Per yeah, day so or what, per hour? Yeah, yeah. So what happened is the actual data set has values that cover uh, something like 2,200 hours worth of data. So I, so I took it, so what I did is I collated them into uh, a day, and within the day I broke them into bins of one hour each. Oh. So, oh, so I've oh. got 15 bins uh, starting from sort of, I mean, I could share the table with you if you wanted, but uh, shall I share uh, the table so you can have a look at it? No, no, no. I was just uh, okay. asking so, for how how did you do this? Two thousand two hundred hours. Yeah. Into so there a are, day? no, no. So so what happens is that the data set itself there's a there's information for each hour of the day what happens and it covers a period of five years, and so I used uh, Google Colab to okay. find the average. So say for example from five o'clock to six o'clock, I found the average solar radiation between okay, five and six okay, every okay, single day. Okay, okay. Then I found the solar average for, you know, six to seven, seven to eight. So I use Google Colab to get me those results. Okay, so, so, so you have something like eight to nine. Yes. And an average yes. solar radiation. Yes, correct, correct. That's exactly so what I mean. 10 to 11, so some, so, so, so yes. okay. So you so have 15, 15 of this. Yes, 15 bins I have, yeah. Okay, so maybe it ends at some eight to nine p.m. or yeah, sorry, fourteen bins, not fifteen. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay, and you have only single values. Yes, yeah, single values in them, which are averages of all those days put together. Ah, uh, and what do you want to predict? So, I need to know how to fit a distribution to it, because. I tried putting it to a normal distribution, but it gives me rubbish values. Something is not working, and I don't of know. Of course, see, yeah. you have 15 data points, right? 
15 data points clt will throw you out clt says come with me come to me with at least 30 okay. then i can show you a po- proper uh curve okay with 15 uh what you can do is maybe you can do binomial or some such Uh, even if it's binomial i don't understand how i would parameterize it with a binomial mm-hmm. let me let me just think about this so you have 15 yes and they all have values in them you know very little in the first hour very little in the last hour and as the day progresses towards sort of midday it has it takes solar radiation takes very high values okay so Can you try this like this? Instead of Okay, yeah, tell me one thing. What 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 problem you are trying to do? Like you do you want to predict at a particular time in a particular day? Uh you want to give the output uh, uh, the solar radiation value or you want yes, I mean, to tomorrow is... tomorrow what what will be the average or the max solar value yeah so the i suppose the random variable i was trying to model was what solar radiation to expect at a given hour in a given day at a given hour in a given day uh maybe uh, as this relating to time i can think of two things one is poison or uh these are the distribution with re- re- relates time actually okay uh poison you can try and if not poison so if i tried the poison because i i kind of tried to do the poison but i don't understand again like i said how to parameterize how it to, how to yeah. yeah yeah so because my understanding of the poison was it has to be discrete values for poison right i mean yes like, yes yes and uh, also the other problem is with poison uh, because there is a factorial in the bottom it can't take very large values so you know it's got to be mm-hmm. quite small values for it to work right 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 agreed whereas agreed. solar radiation ranges all the way from uh, uh, to in my case 25 watts all the way up to 300 and 60 watts uh, how much how much it started from 25 to 360 oh so so uh, can you modify your problem if possible i can't think of this but i i more or less thought of this thing uh, can you work like max of um, that uh, uh, so i mean in a day So your random variable takes max of uh, all the solar radiation you saw in that particular day. Yeah. So that will give you a single value for each of the day, right? Yes. And you can predict a uh, future, uh, stating like tomorrow it might reach this point, or it might reach. So are you saying that that's what I should model instead? uh instead because you will have more samples with you right like okay okay uh see that's that's the worst thing about if you don't have enough number of samples yeah even if you try to fit any kind of model it won't fit that easily even so though it fits is... either it fits overfitted or yeah. it's, it will it will give you some vague errors uh once you try to predict so what you're saying is i should not have averaged each hour is ah it? you shouldn't have average the char is what i see or just take the r basis only maybe you don't need to consider average also if you 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 just take the peak hours maybe afternoon 12 to 1 okay okay of all days okay okay for 5 years yes then try to predict anything try to predict <laughs> model and okay then you can so, predict something so so basically this this is very difficult to do so i should yes. change what i'm trying to model yeah yeah uh, so that's my suggestion because 
15 with 15 data points it's highly unlikely to get a model and fitting and to do some analysis on it okay 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 so that's what i feel and when it is time constraint yeah poisson or exponential or what else what else will be time constraint is what i am thinking sir if it's exponential won't the support go from like zero to infinity to infinity yeah yeah but even this has a chance to go right like you can't bound it right see until now you observed this much but there might be some time where it can take more than that also so even though you say it is 10000 bounded by 10000 watt okay, okay. meter yeah, square yeah, yeah yeah it can it can cross that also but with very very less probability yeah very super super unlikely ah uh, unlikely but it can take yeah yeah right. so yeah maybe yeah that that i will just see if there are any time constrained models are there time dependent models are there okay and i didn't, I didn't realize that this was such a complex <laughs> problem <laughs> <laughs> no no this 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 was Uh, this was uh, converted into complex because of the less number of data points data points yeah, yeah yeah i mean i tried to make it something that was you know useful so okay maybe maybe uh, 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 you can do the same thing instead of hours can you do some 5 minute interval gaps or something like that uh no the, that's the problem the the actual data was also given in hours but it's given oh, by the okay. day so so Then that's why i collated all the days together to mm. produce a single column for each hour okay okay if it had been if you have the data for every 5 minutes you would have some some enough yes. information some, with some. you and yeah you can you could have okay. yes okay. uh, i mean i suppose that way they do have Uh, other hours where there's no sunlight at all and that makes it 24 mm -hmm. but uh -huh. most of the most of them will be nothing in there so that's why i artificially reduce mm -hmm. the um, the interval i'm looking at because there's no i thought there was no point in looking at the intervals where there's no sunlight mm -hmm. so, see there is one distribution i think there is uh, the time difference between uh, two poison arrivals let me take a look at that i am not able to recall if it is exponential or some some other distribution it follows let me think about that but but anyway try 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 to change your model is what i said yeah model something your different. problem uh, yeah, problem, change uh, problem, problem statement <laughs> okay okay thank you sir okay yeah okay sir hmm uh sir i had uh, sent a mail to you and prashant sir this uh, uh, since when that uh, uh, you know the day the quiz two results were out mm. uh, my uh, extra activity uh, week two marks got uh, you know reset to zero it was showing 100 the day before yes and then when i the day it was uh, the quiz two results came the afternoon when i saw it was showing zero even now it is showing zero So I had sent a mail regarding this. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I saw, so I saw I that know. mail, and it it was a slight error from back end. Don't worry. Okay. You get your. But now, how will you be like? You know, you will remember uh, that because even the week three is again there was an error. He said uh, it is showing thirty three. He said uh, we have already uh, you have done everything, so we will give you uh, maximum marks. <laughs> so, but at the end of it, when you are calculating. How will you remember a particular case of mine, sir? Uh, no, no. Should I put a reminder? No need. See, back end your marks got updated. Okay. Oh. Okay. So it will not reflect in the front end. If we try to reflect, this is what happens. Errors will come oh. up suddenly. Okay. 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 And uh, you, you. I don't know whether you guys know or not. See, most of the degree student, degree level students got hundred for every every assignment suddenly. Okay. So just like you got zero, they got they they got hundred. Hundred is much better than zero. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. So, but there are some errors. We are rectifying it. Give us some time. So it will be okay. it will be rectified automatically. Okay. okay. So sir, even it. sir, even zero and hundred is better. Like I have mailed you and Prashant sir again. Like uh, my activity is like absent. 
and Achha, uh, you mail me i i can't see uh, like before it, it it was for week uh, activity for week 3 sir so it been it has been like uh, for one month I, like every session i am like reminding you and prashant sir i mailed him is it yeah yeah sir i have mailed and i have posted in the discourse okay, i okay. even tagged you and okay. if you if you want i'll just send you again today the mail i have okay. attached actually uh, the i have submitted but it's showing not submitted but i didn't take the screenshot of the portal but then i went to the google sites and i took the history that when i did submit the you know the changes i have made in the portal okay so i have sent that screenshot okay okay i i just saw your mail so it was sent july 21 okay i don't know how i missed it so maybe i'll just check check it oh so you have my mail right sir i i am just seeing your mail okay i'll, okay. I'll just go through it okay okay so okay. thank you yeah thank you sir. okay okay so anything else see next next two weeks okay one thing uh, to say about next weeks so i have uh, taken three sessions for week 11 in my older uh, terms and i hope they are uploaded on to the portal and can someone confirm me So, are you getting the previous term live sessions on the portal? Sir, I would just uh, directly, I'll directly go to the YouTube channel and I'll just okay. access from there. Aha, uh -huh. that is one way. Uh -huh. I think uh, on the portal live sessions tab. Okay, maybe week eleven is not added. Uh, we will add week eleven also. Week eleven, it's like I did like seasons, season one, season two, season three, and very elaboratively. And I hope everyone. Uh, it is elaborated in detail so you might get bored if you are getting bored just do it 2x speed 2x or 1.5 speed based on your speed please watch those lectures and i hope uh, sir it's not it. it's not there on the portal it's not it's not there but i uh, will i will ask them to upload okay. so as of now it's not there so or you can go to the youtube channel or youtube channel and go to last to last up I you say you won't do like a detailed session this time around. Ah, uh, if I do the detailed session again, it will take me. You see, if you go there, it will be like two hours, two and a half hours, and three hours of uh, sessions. Two, two and a half, three is like seven and a half hours of only week eleven contents. Yes. Okay, so repeating that seven and a half hours again is like a big task too. Okay. So. we will do an open session for sure but not in that detail okay so would you say week 11 is uh, the like the hardest in the i i'm, I'm not saying week 11 is the hardest week 11 you will be introduced to more technical terms still more, lot more technical terms and you have to cope up with them and even if you miss one thing you will you will lose the connection in week 11 and people okay. are like two there are two kinds of people i have observed one say the easiest weeks are week 11 and 12 throughout the stats too and some say week 11 12 were the hardest okay so you decide uh, which type you are so after looking at so, so statistically what happens <laughs> <laughs> so the data says sir, about the marks and Uh, then, what what's the prior what's the prior distribution uh prior distribution i say the fraction that people who say it is easy is somewhere around 0.3 0.2 to 0.3 so Most here here comes the facts so yeah see that 0.3 are like they are like So we struggled in week seven, week eight, week nine, week ten. But when it comes to test, hypothesis testing, it's pretty straightforward, pretty evident, pretty easy. I can relate it to the real life applications, and I can see, I can do. And the other uh, set of people like uh, try to understand the terms which uh, starts to come. Like we we start with acceptance set, acceptance region. So in order to understand all these things, they will take some time. but uh, as the time progresses when they reach week 12 they will get used to it 
Ok Ya yes, Sayan uh, Sir I have a question regarding week 11 if that's okay Yeah yeah definitely okay If, okay. if none of okay. you have any sir. week 10 questions I can Yes. So, sir, uh, there is a question. Uh, I mean, uh, I have I have solved it, but mm -hmm. my concern is completely different. I mean, mm -hmm. sir, it's a, I guess tutorial question. No, it's practice assignment. Fifteen question. I'm just telling you for the uh, for the context. So, mm -hmm. sir, I calculated for the sample size n, and as usual, we always get some decimal values. Mm -hmm. So, sir, there are two kinds of questions over there with the same context where we gotta calculate n. I mean, the sample size. Which mm -hmm. I mean, what should be the sample size for the the hypothesis accepts or rejects or something like that. So, mm -hmm. sir, I got n as uh, eighty-seven point four two, and I interpreted it as eighty-seven since it's eighty-seven point four two. But mm -hmm. in the portal, it gave me eighty-eight as answer. Hmm. Answer again in some question. I guess it was tutorial question or something. I don't remember exactly. It was nineteen point three two, and I inserted the answer nineteen, and it was correct. So, sir, what kind of decimal calculation we are actually doing? I don't understand. Because if it is okay. more than five, we actually add up, and less than, then we just take that value because it cannot cross it. I mean, one extra cannot hmm. happen, but one less can happen. Something like that. Got it. So it was actually n greater. Yes. It, it was actually n greater than. So we got to take like nineteen point three. So we got to take twenty, right, sir? Right. So there is a difference but it between. Wasn't, sir, it, but it was sir given. I mean, I understand that greater than, but sir, it was nineteen point three two. But the answer was nineteen actually. It wasn't twenty. That's why I'm asking. Like, what kind of scenario is going? Can you give this? See, I I I think there are some some sort of minor errors need to be fixed. Is that coming? See, but sir, are... also n n cannot be partial values anyway. So if it's like nineteen point three, it still has to be like, in my opinion, twenty. Twenty, correct. See, whenever you get something like this, n greater than or equals to nineteen point three implies n cannot be nineteen. Mm -hmm. That sure. th 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 Yes, sir, that's clear. That that is clear. Yeah. That has to be twenty. The next value so has to be the next value, value you should pick, and that should be twenty. And I think uh, you just have to give me this error. Here it is. But for the other case, you said again the same thing. If you get something like twenty-eight point zero one, also. So again, sir, it would be twenty-nine. Twenty-nine, yeah. So you should always include twenty-nine. Uh -huh. This is correct. So maybe you should give me. This this error where this error has happened, just check and let us know, and we will compute it yes, again. Yes, sir. I'll let you know. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will update. Uh, sir, because the thing is, I mean, when the greater is coming, I mean, sir, two cases mm -hmm. are there. I mean, two critical value equations we are getting from significance level and the power of the test from mm -hmm. alpha and from beta we are getting. So there is no greater than or less than over there because we are actually calculating for F Z inverse. Those values are there. So we are getting c equals some constant plus some into f z inverse of something. So there is no uh, greater than or less than value over there. See, your n cannot take these fractions, right? Ha ha ha! That is that is uh, clear. That is clear. And yeah, but, see this yes, this region. Uh, this regions. See when you draw the graphs, you will get to know that when even though you you do equate or equal to or something, you are always approximating. And whatever n you are going to get, it is actually says you that at least you should have that that many n. Okay, so sir, it's right. by intuition actually. I mean, ah, even ah, if ah. we do not get any whole number over there, even if you said mm -hmm. like zero point one, even if that greater than equals to is not there, by intuition we take since it's slightly greater than that particular whole number twenty eight. So we are gonna check for twenty eight examples. Right. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. So, okay, so, so your so critical that, value that, touches that mm -hmm. particular value. If you have n is equal to twenty-eight point zero one, that means if your n is twenty-eight, your c or whatever value you compute, it will not touch the required value. It will not touch. Ah, uh, okay, 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 right? okay. So, so sir, that 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 voltage current concept doesn't come over here. So, if it's like uh -huh. slightly greater than, we have to take it in by intuition the next value. Next value. Okay, 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 sir. Got it. And uh, let 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 me know this error, okay? 
where this 19 point ha ha yeah yeah 19 and let me see it and then ha ha okay sir okay sir it is 20 we will update the answer okay sir okay i'll let you know about it okay okay then uh, what else uh, time is done so hopefully we will meet next week okay thanks thanks sir good night okay thank you sir thank you sir thanks, thanks.